Hello and welcome to ATP Report. It's the Katie and Barry Show. Joining us all the way from across the pond, the magnificent Katie Hopkins. Hi, Katie. <laughs> Hi, Barry. Thank you for that kind introduction. We are talking about some very important stuff today. Let's start out with COVID. You told me a few days ago that Great Britain has gone absolutely nutty with the new COVID rules. Uh, how bad is it on your side? It's extreme, Barry, it's extreme. Uh, we are under an extreme lockdown. And as per normal, we're given a date that it might end, but we're not sure that it will end. And we're now being threatened severely for Christmas. So we had people on our breakfast show here that people, everybody watches, saying, you can celebrate at Christmas, but prepare to bury your relatives in January. And that was the phrase that was used, prepare to bury your dead relatives in January for the sake of a couple of days of fun. So England is locked down, Scotland has imprisoned its own people. And I have to tell you, the mood here is, is dark and it is hard. You know, we've got a horrible series of Democrat governors in the states. Um, the profound um, bizarro situation is in California where the governor says one thing and does the opposite. Um, and the state is locked down and, and you can have Thanksgiving, but uh, you have to have a mask on in between chewing and you can only have 10 people and you can only have two families and you have to eat outside and you have to be six feet apart and you can use the bathroom, but it has to be sanitized. You can't have turkey on the same plate. I mean, the, the rules are fricking crazy. And then here in the States, the California governor gets busted for going to a $350 per entree dinner at the most expensive restaurant in the state of California with, oh, I don't know, a dozen people smushed in at a table, no masks, indoors, talking, singing, hugging, and the people don't rise up and throw them out of office. I, are there discrepancies like that between what the leaders are saying in Great Britain and what the people are demanded to be doing? I was looking at Gruesome Newsom's Twitter feed and his new rules. So this 10 p.m. till 5 a.m. curfew, which, you know, is the madness of that is, is COVID only coming out in the daytime now? Is that a rule? And secondly, of course, the hypocrisy. And it's not that our side mind if someone goes out for dinner. We, we want to just be able to do the same thing, right? Um, but certainly we have that duplicity here. In fact, the very guy locking us down had his mistress coming over to visit him for conjugal relations whilst he locked the rest of us down. And I think that's it. I, I don't mind what he does in his private life. That's his business. I do mind if the rest of us aren't allowed to do anything near the same. Yeah, do as I say, not as I do, right? Always. So Scotland seems to have gone around the bend and is worse than England. What, what's going on up there? Yeah, so I've got the headline here. Um, Scottish people banned from leaving the country and anyone crossing the border will be fined 60 pounds. So they effectively are being imprisoned in Scotland. They're not allowed to come into England in case they try and escape. And the interesting thing I think, Barry, is, you know, and I've been talking to a number of people about this. When we're growing up, we wonder how things like the Berlin Wall happened. We wonder how was that possible? How did that ever come to pass? And the more 2020 goes on, the more you start to see how easy it was for that to come to pass. You know, who could believe today, Scotland, Scottish people aren't allowed to come. We're, we're all British, but they're not allowed to come to England in case they make a run for it. Over what, a handful of crazy cases of flu. I mean, it is extreme here, Barry, it really is. I, I'm, I'm stunned, and yet I've got a million stories like that from the States that are just as horrible. Um, the people that are being so controlled, Katie, the Brits and the individual stories, um, do they feel 
like their lives are being saved or is there a subplot that something nefarious is going on and this is about control rather than our survival? No, I would say Americans are much more awake to that. And of course, particularly the Americans I would be hanging out with, uh, Trump supporting, freedom loving. Here, I saw someone the other day and it's the first time I've seen them for a long time. And I would always consider him my friend and actually someone I would confide in. Um, but he has totally swallowed all of this. In fact, he got aggressive, I would say, when I was suggesting that everybody should do what they choose and what makes them feel safe. That was not acceptable to him. So my fear is there is a stalwart few that will hold the line and our freedom fighters with us, but many, most are complicit in this, are applauding the vaccine and they believe salvation lies in the vaccine. They are programmed the, the salvation, what we need to be free again is a vaccine. So just to be clear that we're talking about the same situation, we have a, a flu, it's a bad flu, that 99% of the people don't get. And if you're one of the people that gets it, your survival rate without a pre-existing condition, you know, like you're 85 or you have cancer or heart disease or high blood pressure or whatever, the survival rate is something like 99.7% um, <laughs> of the 1% that might get it. And for that, Great Britain is destroying its economy and most people are going along with it. Do I have that clear? You have that absolutely clear, absolutely clear. And there's something about you know, it's something we will notice often. There's a lot of people who like being told what to do. It's the same people who typically work in the public sector. They like rules, they like systems, they like fitting into an organization. They're now applying that to their life. They want to be part of the state. They like being told everything that they can and can't do. And they are now freed of responsibility because the state is paying for a lot of them. So what is there to worry about? There seems to be much more that attitude and that I'm seen as the raving lunatic for having a view that's different to that, you know, or stating those facts. Uh, you know, well, my last video was removed from YouTube for stating exactly what you just stated. Oh, you mean telling the truth? Yes, and they are going to criminalize that in the UK. So just as they have done with hate speech, it will become a criminal offense to speak out against the vaccine or to suggest anything that suggests medical choice. They're gonna criminalize that in the UK. The video that you talked about that got you banned on YouTube again, we have on ATP Rumble. So anybody that wants to see what you said that was such a terrible free speech crime can come to ATP's site on Rumble and check it out. Just point of information, we still have it, and it hasn't been censored by us. So Australia, <laughs> Australia sounds like Scotland, only way worse. What the heck did they just do? <laughs> so South Australia uh, gave 12 hours notice, and they locked down the people, and they said no exercise, no going outside, no takeaways, no nothing. And it was off the back of one guy's story about how he contracted COVID. And it turns out that he told a small lie. He actually worked in a pizza place. He didn't disclose it. So they locked down all of South Australia on the basis of one guy and his COVID and a bit of a lie that he told. And to me, the madness isn't just that a guy told a lie because we're being tracked and traced everywhere we go, it's that they locked down those people with that much stringency over one individual. You know, this is really where we're at. And I, and I just think 12 hours notice and saying that you're not allowed out your home, that's the reason people panic, you know, flood a supermarket because they're worried. Um, and I wonder how far we are from needing to be more prepared for long-term lockdowns like that. Oh my God. And 
you know, I, I don't know what's scarier, that the government would pull a stunt like that or that the people would put up with a stunt mm -hmm. like that. Both and this, are yeah. equal horrible. Yeah, and this is unarmed people. And this is where, you know, I always take some faith is this is unarmed nations. And that's always going to be a differentiator with America. That's always going to be a differentiator. And I hold on to that at the moment. Our Second Amendment, so sacred. Thanks for joining us today on Barry and Katie Report for ATP. Remember, if you haven't subscribed to our text message alert system, please do that now. Take out your cell phone, text the word TRUTH, T-R-U-T-H, send it to 88202, push send. You'll get all of our shows with Katie and Barry and everything else from ATP on your cell phone, absolutely free. We never charge for content. For ATP, I'm Barry Newsbaum.